by Shira Milgram in honor of Rabbi Dara Frimmer at Temple Isaiah, Immaculate Heart Community, and Spring Acupuncture and Spiritual Direction. Our stewards this evening are the Reverend Sally Bingham in honor of Congregation Emmanuel, San Francisco, Mark Carlson in honor of Lutheran Church of the Incarnation in Davis, and our keepers, Debbie Mitels in honor of Carol Cross, Alice Struffel in honor of Reverend Dr. Bob Shore Ghost, Juana Torres, Gerald Bernstein, Peninsula JCC in honor of Rabbi Marv Goodman, Pat Carloni, and John Talbot. Thank you all. It is through your support that California IPL is able to do this work and bring us all together. Now I would like to introduce the Reverend Sally Bingham, California Interfaith Power and Lights founder and our president emeritus. Sally will be presenting our honor roll of congregations and volunteers. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. And gosh, it's so much fun to see friends out there. Uh, we've done this event, this award giving event in so many different ways. We started about 18 years ago, giving out what we called energy Oscars. And then the Academy uh, people wrote to us and said, cease and desist. So we started calling them cool congregation awards. And I will be showing you tonight uh, lists of, I'm not gonna read them all out because like all of our other events, we're already behind time. So I won't, uh, I'm gonna show you pictures of and highlight a few of the congregations, but it wouldn't be prudent to, um, to read all the names. We've had, we've given awards to congregations all up and down the California coast now for 20 years. And it's been really great fun. And I wanna give, a shout out to Susan Stevenson, who's been with us, with me, since 1998. And without Susan, there wouldn't be a California Interfaith Power and Light. And Alice, too, has been with us for such a long time. Lior is newer to the California IPL program, but doing a, just a bang up job here in Northern California. And there are lots of other peoples that I would, I just wish we were in a room in person so that I could have individual conversations and hug some of you that I haven't seen in such a long time, but I've got to get on with the show. Um, let's see, with, here's the honor roll. And uh, is it Catherine, are you gonna move these slides along or do I do it? These are congregations that have solar energy in California and sh the, uh, we don't have to count all those, but there are a lot of them. And I think there's another slide, go to the next slide. And the next slide, I find it rather extraordinary that there are that many California IPL congregations with solar on the roof. And we helped do some of that. Some of them did it on their own, but mostly we found financing for it. And I didn't know till I saw this list how many of them there were. And on the next slide, Oh, and this is energy efficiency. These are all the congregations that got energy efficiency awards over the years. And some of them just did outstanding work on cutting, they, they cut their energy and then they'd get put solar up and pretty soon they were having just, you know, $15 energy bills. And uh, we, so we gave prizes to all these congregations. Next slide, please. Uh, and then we had a program for saving water and water stewardship. And those, um, those are the congregations that have done as be best they can so far with not wasting any water. And then for climate advocacy, this is gonna include a lot of you all who have gone to Sacramento to lobby with CIPL when we were uh, trying to get legislation passed that was about energy efficiency or lower uh, fuel standards or anything that had to do with protecting the climate. And um, so we would have these annual trips up to Sacramento and, and mentioned it when we went around and introduced ourselves, several people in this group went with us. And then climate education, we had, I mean, look at all the congregations that are, this is when we actually asked the leaders, the clergy in these congregations, 
whatever denomination they were to give so sermons on climate. And we gave them sample sermons and some of them wrote their own from scratch and then we'd post them on the website. And these are the congregations that got outstanding awards for climate education. And then we were starting, I think, oh, well, maybe 10 years ago, we realized that we weren't gonna do it as adults. We, I mean, by ourselves, we had to have youth involved. Well, of course you all know now that youth are very involved in the climate movement, but we did start some programs that were just for young people to get involved in, um, in, in climate work. Congregations planning, what are they doing guys? Um, planning to do something. Yes, this is a big year for planning because it's hard to do, start projects uh, under lockdown and COVID situation, but oh, I see what you mean. plans well, for next year. I see what you mean. Well, so many congregations have had to stop all their in-person services anyway, and they're having to do services online. I'm at Grace Cathedral and we're doing all of our services online. Um, but so these congregations are getting ready for what are, we, what are they gonna do as we go forward with a new administration? Mo most important to all of this are the individual people who have helped us and volunteered volunteered their time, their energy, and their money. And um, <clears throat> there's a few people on this list who were on our board of directors. And we have uh, in people who came to the office, Margaret, um, who uh, introduced herself earlier, was with us for almost a year or more as a volunteer. And I want to give a shout out to Barbara Beisel. Her name is there. Barbara came to every single one of our uh, Energy Oscar Awards and events, and she would be the bartender, but she didn't just bartend. <laughs> she got the wine, she got the glasses, she set it all up, and then she returned everything to wherever we rented it from and has been a wonderful, wonderful volunteer for California IPL. And I don't want to leave out, because he's so important, Jerry Bernstein, who has been volunteering in our office now for almost three years. And Jerry just happens to like IPL and the work we're doing. And he comes regularly and uh, is there in the office with the staff as often as they can go. Now, obviously, they're not going as much as they used to, but um, they do go and he is volunteering. So those are our honor roll um, honorees tonight. And um, I'm going to try to see, I think that if I'm correct, this event has brought in $10,000 already just as a, as, a, as a sort of gala fundraising event for IPL. And we're gonna see if we can get it to 20. If you all are wine drinkers, I'm gonna, can you see, I'm gonna put this really close. Do you see this label? One of the things we used to do at the end of our events was auction off a bottle of Screaming Priest. And this, this label is copied from uh, Screaming Eagle, which is a $10,000 bottle of wine that obviously isn't this wine. But a friend of ours and a supporter of CIPL made a label with this, and it's Screaming Priest. And the wine is, uh, oh, it's a blend. It's Petite Syrah, Merlot, Sangiovese, and Zinfandel all mixed together. But it's a good bottle of wine, and the, the, the fun of this is the, is the label. It, will anybody unmute themselves and offer some, some uh, whopping amount of money for a bottle of wine? Sally, I'm going to start at 75. Oh, That's Alice. Oh, okay. Well, I think it's worth at least a hundred. There we go. That's so wonderful. So this will might might even turn into a real auction. Okay, we have a hundred. Anybody else? You must all be muted. Who's in control of this muting? Unmute everybody. <laughs> all right, I'll I'll go 180. Who was that? Steve Fox. Oh, Steve. Hi. Hi. Okay, now we're up to 
$180. Anybody else? All right, it's going, going, gone to Steve Fox for $180. Steve, would you please put in the chat the address where you'd like to have this sent and we'll get it down to you. And okay. if, if you just put it in the chat window. And uh, this is really great. And Jerry, if you'd like a bottle, you can have one too for your $100. Thank you. <laughs> I know let, let, let us know. Um, now it is a huge honor I mean, we are so lucky to have Fran Pavley with us, and I'm sure you all know that she's been a champion for, for climate solutions for all the years that she spent up in Sacramento. And, and Fran helped us a lot in our work, and I think there was a few stories she can tell where we might have even helped her, but she got the fuel standards for automobiles lowered and she's been a real champion, recognized not just by CIPL, but from organizations all over the country, see Fran Pavley as a hero. And I am happy that she's with us tonight and going to say a few words. So Fran, you're on. If yes, uh, great for me to be here. And Sally, um, yes, it's too bad we can't do this all in person. The years oh, go yeah. by. Uh, way too quickly. And so thank you very much. And I wanted, I was asked to say a few words and I'm going to do that because I'm going to tell a few stories. And Sally and if Bob Epstein, you're involved and others that grew up in Sacramento in the days of trying to pass the tailpipe emission bill. Um, maybe you can verify where, whether some of these stories are actually true, but they <laughs> somehow have taken on lives of their own over the last 20 years. So congratulations to CIPL on your 20th anniversary. And I was sworn into office in my first assembly um, race 20 years ago this month. So um, we've sort of grown up together, so to speak. So congratulations uh, again, because you've made a tremendous difference in helping us message and reach out to people when it comes to the biggest challenge of maybe our collective lifetimes, and that's global climate change. Um, as you mentioned, Sally, uh, California is sort of unique in that we can uh, pass more stringent tailpipe emission standards than the federal government, because we have a waiver under the Federal Clean Air Act. And the Federal Clean Air Act has an anniversary this year too. You guys are 20 years old. The Federal Clean Air Act is 50 years old. <laughs> and it's been under attack lately, and hopefully we've turned turned the corner on that and our waiver to pass more stringent emission standards and sort of lead the way will still be in effect in other states, as you know, under the Federal Clean Air Act, um, have the opportunity and option of joining us. And I have read in the paper, not that you can believe everything you read in the paper, that part of President-elect Biden's strategy under climate, right at the top of his list, was protecting our waiver and making these policies once again, um, the MOU stand up, the uh, increase in cafe fuel efficiency standards and the California tailpipe emission standards and move forward with that and actually increase uh, what's been done. So looking forward to a little change in the EPA and the administration. Um, you guys have really made a difference. And so let me share with you a few ways that I remember you leveling the playing field in Sacramento. I was a freshman legislator. My background is I taught middle school for 29 years. And I think that's the perfect background for being in Sacramento because nothing scared me, right? <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't lived with eighth graders, you know, 40 of them in a room with you, oil companies and all that opposition was, was easy. Um, and so, but we, I did realize after introducing the bill um, that just an environmental bill by itself was not going to pass. Uh, President Bush had pulled out of the Kyoto Agreement, uh, but the Union of Concerned Scientists had just completed an amazing report on direct impacts of climate change to California. That's 20 years ago. You should go back and read it. They hit everything exactly right. Extreme weather patterns, prolonged droughts, wildfires, and the list goes on and on. So they did an amazing job. But um, I'm pretty good at counting, and I knew you needed a simple majority in, 
in the assembly to pass a bill and that's 41 votes. I wasn't going to have the votes to get it off the floor. So I made it what's called a two year bill. And during that two years, um, I spent my efforts and time building a coalition. And who were the first few members of that coalition to join in? Interfaith Power, uh, Interfaith Power and Like was right up at the top. You were one of them. And if Bob Epstein, I noticed he's a donor to this cause, if he's one of the people joining us here this evening, uh, Environmental Entrepreneurs, E2, based in the Bay Area at the time, they put a business voice on what was called an environmental bill. Also for the first time, Healthcare Organizations, America Lung Association, this was their very first time lobbying on any bill. So we had this sort of uh, committed coalition, maybe not a lot of experience in um, lobbying in the halls of Sacramento, but we had the energy and the compassion to move forward together. Uh, also joining this group was the ski industry for selfish purposes. They somehow like snow way too much and value that. But air and water districts, um, elected officials, environmental organizations, scientists and professors. We believed in science. We didn't even debate whether there was climate change. That was sort of refreshing. And we had in time, um, uh, excuse me, uh, editorial support as well, who framed this as a David versus Goliath struggle uh, right in the Capitol. So uh, many of your members, Sally, met with legislators, not only in the Capitol, but in their district offices. I remember I was invited to come upstairs in the Capitol to the cafeteria, met with about 30 members of uh, CIPL and we talked about messaging and getting ready to meet with the legislators and they did an amazing job. And I also remember, I'm not sure how you did this one, you had full page ads and papers with like 100 or 200 names right. of religious leaders from all over the state in all different religion, you know, Christian, Muslim, Jewish, totally really impressive. So uh, you can't really argue with their moral support for this measure compared to other people's support uh, which would or opposition to it was sort of based on their bottom line and, and that was making money maybe the oil companies and the auto dealers at the time so that was an amazing thing um the other thing that happened and you mentioned this because you had a list i know i heard from several rabbis and uh, ministers and things from churches who actually was part of their sermon. Uh, one, uh, I guess it was a, not a priest, but a minister in a Sacramento church bicycled over to my Capitol office to give me a copy <laughs> of the sermon he was going to deliver. He was must have been very committed on, on Sunday. So that was amazing to me. And uh, for those of you, I'm sure you all know Sally Bingham, of course, when she's leading the charge, you can't help but be so inspired to do even more. So we had a great time and had fun with that as well. But one of my favorite stories, Sally, and there's, well, there's two, and you can confirm if this is true or not. Well, we were, it, the bill went through the process. We were having time, tough times passing it. Um, so we had to be very creative on what we were going to do. Well, we needed 41 votes and one legislator from the San Diego area who had told Speaker Wesson and I, that he would vote for it on the floor, but decided to change his mind over all the opposition. He had a home visit from his priest at his home with his wife at the kitchen table talking about this bill. This guy, who's now in Congress, I won't name names, but maybe we'll figure that out, um, became our 41st vote on the floor. So I heard Bob Epstein tell this story, but maybe you can confirm that particular story. But so uh, that's an interesting uh, CIPL story. Now, the other one I have is uh, we pulled in the entertainment industry. I mean, we had fun passing this bill too. It was the right thing to do, but you have to have fun. And we built our coalition just kept increasing, increasing where we had thousands of names and college campuses were engaged and it was it it was fun and and challenging as well 
Um, but the entertainment industry got involved and Sally, I'm looking at you because I know you're a member, uh, if you're still a board member of Environmental Defense Fund. Mm -hmm. Yes, well. I, I, actually, I, I was a member for 32 years, but I just resigned. You just resigned, okay. But was it you, well, your idea to have Paul Newman call women legislators <laughs> in support of the bill? I had a real problem with that for several reasons. One, as soon as word got out that Paul Newman was calling women legislators, uh, female legislators who were going to vote for the bill came into my office and said, now they're not until they got a call from Paul <laughs> Newman. <laughs> so when I met Paul Newman a couple of years afterwards, when uh, Fred Krupp took me over to the Newman's house, I told that story. <laughs> Joanne was rolling her eyes, but Paul Newman takes 100% of the credit oh. for passing that bill as well. So you can, you can refute if you want to those, <laughs> those two stories. But collectively, on the ground, Interfaith Power and Light was extremely valuable to this. Fun to work with, but dedicated and committed. Um, I went to the uh, temple in the Palisades. They did amazing things, Temple Isaiah, all over the place. And a, a Jewish organization called Kojol, which was very active at the time in, uh, on college campuses. So congratulations. Uh, to all of you, and I wanted to personally thank you for your ongoing commitment. And I couldn't believe when uh, in the um, earlier uh, meeting before this uh, group, uh, you now have, um, you are now involved in 40 states and Washington DC around the country. And we need that because you can, you can secure bipartisan support for one of our biggest and most challenging issues in our lifetime. So I want to encourage you and we'll encourage all of us, we get inspired doing things like this, um, to really step it up the next few years. So I can't wait to participate in your 40th anniversary. Please keep me on your list. Thank you. Well, Fran, thank you so very much. Um, it, it was fun supporting your bills and it was fun to know you and have a champion in Sacramento. Um, um, oh, at this point, we're going to do give out the awards for the congregations that are, are winning things this year. Um, but I want to say one more thing before I sign off, which is I hope that the, that the next 20 years for California IPL are as successful as the last 20 years, and that we will you know, we, we were learning as we went, and now we think we know how to influence legislators. So I'm glad you were our first and our teacher, Fran. And, um, and again, thank you so much for spending the time with us tonight and talking to us and telling those fun stories. So but were now, they true? Well, I don't know about the Paul Newman one, though, although Joanne uh, uh, Newman was on the EDF board. Yes, that's right. So, so that could have happened. I can't take credit for that, though. Okay. I'd like to. <laughs> <laughs> and the priest visit? Oh, the priest visit, yes, that's true. That's oh, true. I, I love that. That was the 41st vote. Yeah, I know. We used to say we, we influenced it. That bill passed by one vote. And yeah, that, that's, did it. I give you the credit for it, because that is exactly right. <laughs> Um, all right, well, let, let's move on. And Susan Stevenson, you've got to be somewhere in a window. You're going to take over now and give out some awards. Thank you. Thank you, Sally. Thank you, Senator Pavley. That was great. And yes, now we are uh, at the time for presenting awards to three outstanding congregations uh, for their climate actions. And we're going to start uh, with the first one um, being presented by our Northern California director, Lior Milgram Gardner. Hello, everybody. I'm honored um, to share this award with Grace for Grace Tabernacle. Um, they're in the Bayview Hunters Point area here in San Francisco. They've been making the clarion call for climate justice for more than a decade. With a firm understanding of the interconnectedness of land degradation and toxic polluting, income inequality, health and ecological justice, and community strength, Grace Tabernacle has become a recognized leader in the San Francisco community. 
Bishop Ernie Jack Jackson, Grace Tabernacle's esteemed leader, understands his calling. He says, from God's creations in the North Pole to the fires here in the Bay Area, our message is to ask what we can do. What can each church do? What can each member do? To this end, the church modeled the power of renewable energy and its connection to local green jobs. A decade ago, Grace Tabernacle installed and celebrated their solar array on historic Juneteenth. Today, the San Francisco African-American Faith-Based Coalition has turned to Bishop Jackson to learn how their communities can follow suit. Understanding the link between pollution and heart and cardiovascular disease, Grace Tabernacle recently co-hosted a gathering of the Association of Black Cardiologists. In addition, the church works in harmony with many other organizations from the faith, justice, climate, and public health sectors to educate and advocate for equitable environmental policy. Just this past year, Grace Tabernacle joined an esteemed group of San Francisco congregations in pursuit of becoming carbon neutral. As part of CIPL's low carbon congregation program with S. San Francisco's Department of the Environment, Grace continued their efforts to shift to healthier cleaning products and reduce the last of their emissions. Sean Rosenmoss of SF Environment shares, we are so proud of this powerful San Francisco congregation. Grace has done so much to not only reduce their own carbon emissions and protect the environment, they have become supermodels for creation care and showing what can be done when we all work together. Congratulations, Grace Tabernacle, the award in environmental justice. Bishop Jackson, we invite you to accept the award and say a few words. Well, wow. uh, thank you so much, Lior and uh, CIPL for this uh, great honor. We are both humbled and honored to be recipient of this year's award on the 20th anniversary of California Interfaith Power and Light. And I'd like to say thank you to uh, Reverend Sally, to Susan, to Elise, Sally and Lior, to everyone uh, that recognized us and the work that we have done. And we also wish to uh, express our sincere thanks to Rabbi Jonathan Singer and to Rabbi Beth Singer of Congregation uh, Emmanuel here right. in San Francisco for the general support of our work that we're uh, trying to do here in Baby Hunts Point. Uh, we're facing uh, at this time one of the greatest uh, threats to our existence with this COVID-19. And uh, we have another emergency uh, that we cannot forget about, which is climate change and, and global warming. I, I know that because uh, of COVID-19, our priorities are there uh, because we are trying to save lives of family and friends and combat, combat this disease. But uh, at the same time, we cannot forget the current uh, global warming emergencies that uh, only uh, can be resolved by immediately reducing human cause uh, burning of fossil fuels and reducing other greenhouse gases like the release of methane and uh, from fracking and melting permafrost. We've all seen uh, the, the pictures of polar bears stranded on the sea and actually that really kind of gets to me. And they are all too often, however, used as just an iconic poster uh, of a rapidly changing climate. It's more than just polar bears being affected. We, as human, as human beings, are being affected. And uh, as we move forward, we have to look at our generation, our children, and our children's children, those who are coming after us. We are very hopeful, we had grace, and I'm sure you are, and I wanna say uh, this is a congregation, uh, CIPL is a congregation in and of itself. We are very hopeful that with, with President-elect Biden, we can once again focus on one of the most important imminent threats to human and wildlife existence on our planet. Once again, thank you so much for honoring us and God bless you all. Thank you and congratulations, Bishop Jackson and Grace Tabernacle. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> yes, use your buttons. Um, so for the next award, I would like to introduce our Southern California director, 
Alice Struffel, will you please present the next award? Thank you, Susan. I'm, I'm pleased to. And because we are having such a wonderful time together and looking at the clock, I request that you give us 10 more minutes until <laughs> it's 40 for the end of this really terrific event. It's a little bit over, but it's well worth it. So you don't need to look any further than Church of the Presentation in Stockton to find the working embodiment of Pope Francis's encyclical Laudato Si. Devoted to the care for and protection of all creation, Presentation Church installed an impressive 535 panel solar system in 2017. The parish entered into, bar, into a power purchase agreement with K-12 Solar, which owns the panels, receives the federal tax break, and passes those savings on to the church through a lower kilowatt rate. The church took out a loan and put money down up front to secure an even lower rate and has just four years left to pay off the loan. Bill Loiko, a member of Presentation's Finance Council, was a mobilizing force for the effort, stating stewardship of the earth and reduction of pollution as two main factors for the solar system, and greatly reducing the electrical bill each month translates into more finances for church and school improvements, as well as support for Presentation's many ministries. Presentation Church is not just a shining example of renewable energy use. It has worked on environmental justice for years. The church's location in the Central Valley gives parishioners and the surrounding communities a personal view of ecological concerns, such as high pollution rates and the effect of local, of local climate change on agriculture and disadvantaged communities right near Yosemite, Sequoia, and Kings Canyon National Parks. Presentation has hosted educational workshops, often in collaboration with local environmental justice groups and church leaders, held an electronic waste event, distributed energy efficient lighting, and was even featured in US Catholics as an exemplary congregation in the field of cre creation protection. These, in addition to its multiple community assistance ministries, as well as solar, is an inspiring illustrious, um, illustration to us all. We are thrilled to award Church of the Presentation the award for solar stewardship and I invite Deacon Scott Johnson to accept this and say a few words. So Deacon Johnson. Thank you, Alice. <clears throat> I, uh, I wonder where you got all those pictures. <laughs> That's great. Um, uh, you saw me in my white dress there. Those were a bunch of baby Catholics the morning before they were baptized at Easter Vigil. Anyway, um, what I just wanted to say, and you, since you quoted Bill Loiko, that's going to cut my talk really greatly. But everyone does have a, a power bill, and including paces of, of worship. And about five or six years ago, um, the annual power bill at the Church of the Presentation of the Blessed Virgin Mary was approaching six figures. We're a pretty big church. Our church burned down in the late 90s, and we rebuilt it. Well, you saw the pictures. Um, and And open it up in 2000, but, um, but our electrical bill between the church and the school, we have a K through eight school, was, was, you know, in the high six figures. And our pastor at the time and our administrator and our finance council, uh, through their leadership, we installed a solar array, and now our power bill is essentially zero. And by the way, Alice, you asked me, I, I texted Bill Loika, who you referred to, our system is 168.2 kilowatts. Um, and during the first 12 months of operation, we created 269,775 kilowatt hours. And I don't know if that's a lot, but it sure kept us going. <laughs> Our parish finance council studied the issues, spoke to vendors and prepared the proposal. 
And, you know, the Catholic Church is a big bureaucracy. We had to go to the diocese. Uh, we went, they went to the diocesan pastoral and finance councils for review. And our folks made a great presentation and the project was approved. Uh, we put it in uh, the system about four years ago. And since we flicked the switch, uh, our power bill has been essentially zero. But the environmental, um, the environmental benefit, of course, of using clean green energy is very uh, consistent with, as you mentioned, Alice, Laudato Si, Pope Francis' encyclical on the care for God's creation, as well as the philosophy of Cal California Interfaith Power and Light, which you introduced, uh, Betsy Reifsneider uh, introduced us to, and I, I have never met Jonathan Pruitt until tonight. I saw he got the job, but with COVID, we've all been kind of separated. But I, I wanna briefly quote Bill again. Um, he is a parishioner who's not just on the social justice ministry, but on the finance council. And he said, uh, going solar wasn't solely a financial decision. It's this whole idea of being good stewards. And if we look what we've been given by God, it also means this earth that we have and live in. So anything we can do to care for it, to be more kind, to put less pollution in the air, that's what everybody's looking for. So thank you very much for this honor. Congratulations. Congratulations, Presentation Church. And Deacon Johnson, thank you for that overview. Um, and now I am going to present our final exemplar award for the evening to Temple Isaiah from Los Angeles. Um, Catherine is going to be sharing the screen. Thank you. Um, encouraged by a visit from Reverend Sally Bingham in 2001, the green team of Temple Isaiah in Los Angeles embarked upon the journey of faithful climate action. Four of the green team members had nature-centered names, Ivy, Moss, Fox, and Greenspan, which they took as a sign of a twilight zone-like coincidence that they pondered to this day. The green team's purpose is threefold, to increase congregational awareness, change personal behavior, make institutional and societal changes. In the early years, the team gave out CFLs, reusable shopping bags, drinking containers, they hosted zero emissions car shows. They participated in utility sponsored energy efficiency programs and hosted movie screenings. They had some really well-known speakers attend, including uh, Tom Steyer, Bill McKibben, and Senator Fran Pavley. Uh, events that they have hosted uh, at Temple Isaiah uh, include are very are quite varied include a presentation on socially conscious investing um, also film screenings like an inconvenient truth uh, and the film wasted the story of food waste just this last october temple isaiah hosted a series of zoom events on voting temple isaiah as you can see in this picture has been a consistent presence uh, with California Interfaith Power and Light in Sacramento for our lobby days. They are always ready to assist in advocacy, letter writing, uh, phone calling, and their congregation even maintains a rapid responders list for timely advocacy on important issues. The Temple Isaiah Green team also did not overlook the importance of clergy leadership, and Rabbi Zoe Klein Miles has preached some excellent sermons on climate change. She's also spoken out publicly and published opinion pieces. Two current climate activities are raising funds for solar panel installation and developing a six session Zoom series called Combating Climate Change, Our Systemic Sickness, which looks at climate change as a symptom, not just an isolated problem with relevant actions that attendees can take. We are so pleased to present Temple Isaiah with the award for outstanding climate education and advocacy. I would like to invite Senator, I mean, excuse me, Senior uh, Rabbi Zoe Klein Miles to accept this award. Thank you so much. Thank you, Susan and Sally, Alice, Senator Pavley. It's been such an inspiring evening to be with all of you. Thank you. Um, so inspiring to get to know other congregations. 
I wanted to, with all of the thank yous going around and we have so much work to do the road ahead and we are all heading towards a different Thanksgiving uh, than we've ever had before, but I thought I'd use my time um, in the spirit of Thanksgiving to share a Lakota Native American prayer of Thanksgiving. To the creator for the ultimate gift of life, I thank you. To the mineral nation that has built and maintained my bones and all foundations of life experience, I thank you. To the plant nation that sustains my organs and body and gives me healing herbs for sickness, I thank you. To the animal nation that feeds me from your own flesh and offers your loyal companionship in this walk of life, I thank you. To the human nation that shares my path as a soul upon the sacred wheel of earthly life, I thank you. To the spirit nation that guides me invisibly through the ups and downs of life and for carrying the torch of light through the ages, I thank you. You are all my relations, my relatives, without whom I would not live. We are in the circle of life together, coexisting, codependent, co-creating our destiny. One not more important than the other, one nation evolving from the other, and yet each dependent upon the one above and the one below. All of us a part of the great mystery. Thank you for this honor. Thank you for this life to all, L'chaim. L'chaim, congratulations. Thank you, Rabbi Zoe, that was perfect. And congratulations to all of our awardees. That was so inspiring to hear the stories of all of the work that you've been doing over many years. Congratulations. And now I want to move us along and I want to let you all know that California Interfaith Power and Light is not only uh, resting on our laurels, uh, we are not only looking back, we are looking forward we know that the next 10 years is going to be crucial for the climate. Uh, and California Interfaith Power and Light is going to be right there pushing for bold and just climate action. In fact, we have a new three-year strategic plan that is just about complete and a new and an updated vision and mission statement. And I would like to ask Rabbi Marv Goodman of our CIPL steering committee, uh, if he would, uh, speak for a moment, share the new mission, vision, and values statement uh, with all of you. Uh, Rabbi Marv uh, has been on our steering committee and leader on our steering committee for a number of years. Uh, he's former rabbi of Peninsula Sinai Congregation in Foster City, former executive director of the Northern California Board of Rabbis. He's also a master gardener. Welcome, Marv. Thank you, Susan. It was exciting to be part of the uh the committee that put together the new mission values and vision statement. And it's up on the screen, but I'll read it for you in case uh, you can't uh, see it clearly. And as I said earlier, it's short enough, at least the mission and the vision to memorize. So memorize it. So the next time we see you, you know it by heart. And you can test me too. Our mission is California's interfaith power and light it inspires and mobilizes individuals and communities of faith and conscience to take bold and just action on climate change. Our vision, our vision is that California to Faith, Power and Light envisions a stable climate where people live in right and just relationship, interconnected with a healthy and thriving natural world. And we have values, the values that come through these, this mission and vision statement. Because we embrace faith and spirituality, we are grounded in the interconnectedness of the sacred, the natural world, and one another. Because we embrace justice, we strive to act with inclusion and respect, working in solidarity with vulnerable and marginalized communities. Because we embrace hope, we are empowered to live into our vision for the world for present and future generations. Because we embrace courage, we speak with a prophetic voice to create equity and restore wholeness to all. Because love is central to who we are, we are committed to ending the suffering caused by climate change. This is our vision, this is our mission, these are our values, and you are the people with us who will make this all happen. 
Thank you for being here. It's been a wonderful evening. Thank you so much, Rabbi Marv. And now we are almost to our final speaker for this evening. And I am so pleased to welcome Reverend Dr. Gerald Durley, who is our national chair of Interfaith Power and Light. Dr. Durley is the pastor emeritus of Providence Missionary Baptist Church in Atlanta, where he served for 25 years. In 2011, he was inducted into the International Civil Rights Walk of Fame for his contributions during the civil rights movement of the 1960s. Today, he is a leading voice for civil rights and climate justice in Atlanta and the entire country. We are so grateful to have him this evening. Uh, not only is it three hours later for him right now, um, but did I mention he's in Georgia? There are a few things going on there right now. So with no, no further ado, take it away, Dr. Durley. Good evening. What an exciting evening. I am so excited. I've listened to the singing that started off and I got very emotional. And I was emotional because I just left my friend Raphael Warnock and John Isoff. We're going to turn Georgia blue. We're going to run that man out of the White House and we're going to come back and make sure that what we're talking about defending God's perfectly green uh, climate is going to happen. So tonight we're hand counting every vote. We're 14,000 votes ahead, but we want to make sure it's just right. So we're going back through and making sure every vote is right. And I'm excited because tonight I'm on a call tonight in a, a Zoom with fellow warriors, and fellow, fellow co-laborers. And I want to thank my good friend who tricked me into this climate change stuff 10 years ago, Sally Bingham. She tricked me. Uh, I was trying to be an innocent. I'm a civil rights fighter. I came along with Martin Luther King and Andy Young. John Lewis was my buddy. C.T. Vivian was with me for 25 years in the pulpit. So I had, I could care less about a polar bear, trees, bees. What did that mean to me? I'm dealing with police brutality. But they started talking about it's all interconnected. And then I looked at Genesis 2.15 where it says God gave us the ability and he gave us a planet that was all ecologically balanced and I got tricked and I got tricked and I got involved and I found out that I began to put the civil rights movement with the, with the uh, environmental movement and Sally talked and I said, oh no. Then I got crazy with this lady Jane Fonda. She started talking. I said, oh no, I don't have time for this foolishness. That's for white folks who got all the time in the world. I'm a black man that's trying to keep my neighborhood together and keep my church together. I don't have time for this. I don't have time to be out. But then I began to look. And now I began to see the interconnected between the environmental movement, the civil rights movement, and it's all interconnected, police judges, eco-justice. And so there's an excitement on this call tonight because California interfaith power and light, you've been in for 20 years. And I am so thankful to be here tonight because I now our illustrious leader, Susan Hendershot, she is one of the most talented ladies. She's got the insight and the wisdom and she's gonna be leading us now. She's taking over. She's uh, doing some things that are so powerful. So we wanna get in behind her. I don't even have to talk about Susan uh, Stevenson because it can't move unless the neck is right there. Susan Stevenson is the only person that wrote stuff for me and I thought that I had written it and people congratulated me and I didn't do a thing about it. She wrote it. It's teamwork. When you've got a founder like Sally Bingham, you've got a new president like Susan Hendershot and you've got a Susan Stevenson who is the glue that keeps it all going. And then you've got California Interfaith Power and Light. For, for 20 years now, you've been on the cutting edge. You've had perseverance, you've had understanding. You've understood what it meant to speak out when no one else was speaking out. You've been the John the Baptist out there in the wilderness. And that's what it's gonna take. You see, everything is interconnected. I don't make a difference. When I got into moving in 1960, they said I couldn't vote. I couldn't ride in front of the bus. I couldn't drink out of certain water fountains. It was my constitutional right for those things. And it's interesting that in 2020, it is a constitutional right for everybody to have clean water, everybody to have toxic free air, everybody to stop the fracking that's letting methane come up through the shale that's down in the ground. What did that mean to me a few years ago? Absolutely nothing. But now I understand the interconnectedness of all of this. In California, as a state, you've been the leader. You've understood about energy cars. You've understood about 
solar paneling, you've understood about wind, and you've understood about what it means to come together. I, and, and let me be a little biased, I, and I have to do like this because they know I'm on. I was so excited when Bishop Jackson started speaking and talking about Grace Tabernacle, because see, I was in meetings where everybody was talking about the disparity between African-Americans and people of color around climate change, but we were never at the table. Some kind of way we've got to be at the table where there's a diversity because the strength of America has always been the diversity of bringing in uh, black and brown and gay and lesbian and whoever they are. So I was so proud of you when you said those things tonight and I could see that and it made me, it made me, we say, I'm gonna run on to see what the end's gonna be. Praise the Lord, somebody. And get excited about what we're doing. And then I looked up and here comes the Church of Persever a Presentation. I said, look at these folks. <laughs> I loved it because they were saying some things that meant so much what they were stepping out. And it's so good to see that they're being honored tonight. So many times in this environment, in this movement, we're not honored, we're not respected, we're the taillights. But in reality, those of you on this call, those of you who are working with Interfaith Power and Light, those of you who are working with California Power and Light, you're making a difference and never don't think you don't. And then Temple Sinai just slid in there real quietly and they did their thing. I like that. See, when you're a great quarterback, you don't have to tell everybody what you're doing. And that's been the strength when we're in 40 states, 22,000 houses of worship, where people are beginning to, to come together, where God said, I will give you what you need, but you've got to take care of my, 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 my environment. You see, in our denomination, we used to sing a song, I'm on the battlefield, and folks would jump up, I'm on the battlefield, and fall out and throw tambourine. I don't need to meet anybody else on the battlefield. I want to know some folks who are in the battle. Those of you in the call are in the battle. Stay in the battle because there are people on the battlefield who never got in the battle. When Martin and, and Abernathy and Joe Lowry and C.T. Vivian, are, we were in the battle. And if I could be excited 60 years later, we can stay in here and work with this new administration. Yes, we're going to put them in, but we've got some jobs to do. we got to turn the EPA around. We've got to get back into the Paris Treaty. We've got to look at the WHO. You all are involved with that. We've got to look at the legislation that we worked with the last environment to put in. We've got to stop the, uh, uh, the automobile emissions that are going on. We've got to get all this plastic out of the ocean, but it's going to take people of conscience. We're in a moral and an ethical warfare. I'm not here to excite you. I'm excited. Yes, I'm board chair. But I, sometimes I would go to meetings and pe people would give me all these statistics and all these numbers and I, I would get overwhelmed. I don't need that. I just need to know that God is right. And God said, if my people who are called by my name will simply come together and go up to Washington, D.C., join in with Biden and Harris and turn this thing around. That's what we've got to do. We're battling right now in Georgia and we're going to turn it around. And if we don't make it purple, we're going to make it blue. If we don't make it purple or blue, I'll see you in Canada because we've got to make a big difference. And this is what, we got to get waste dumps out of our neighborhood and go to alternative energies. We've got to look at wind and we got to look at solar because now 20 years later, your state, your state, and here's the interesting thing. I picked years ago, I picked all the cotton that Bakersfield had to order. I went to San, I lived in Bakersfield. I graduated, I went to high school in Sacramento, California. I went to Sacramento High and played ball there before I went to Tennessee State and joined up with Dr. King in 1960. So don't question, I'm 78 years old now and I don't feel no way tired. And that's what we got to stay on the battle for, in the battle. So tonight, yes, I'm excited. Yes, you be excited. Thank you so much for all the work you continue to do. I speak on behalf of the board of the Interfaith Power and Light on behalf of our president, Susan Hendershot, our founder, and certainly our executive director, to thank you for what you're doing. We cannot do it alone. But there's something that says, be ye not weary in well-doing, for you will reap in due season if you faint not. I just stop by to say, this is due season right now. <laughs> this is due season. Due season means that we're not gonna turn around. We're not gonna back up. We're not gonna bow. We're not gonna bend. We're gonna stay in there. And if everything is coming your way, you're in the wrong lane. I am so excited tonight just to thank all of you. And congratulations, California Interfaith Power and Light. I am so thrilled to be here. I live in Atlanta, Georgia. You know the battle that we're going through down here. At least they're not lynching and burning our churches now, but it's the same kind of subliminal battle that we're facing that you're facing. 
We are on the right side of justice. Stay strong. And as all of our friends know that we know, after 60 years, if I can stand it for 60 years, you can stand it for 60, 60 more days. You can stand it. And, and Kamala and Biden cannot do it by themselves. They need us. They need the power of a Holy Spirit. They need the power of a God. They need the power of intellect. They need the power of wisdom. They need the power of the synergism of interfaith power and life, California power and life. Y'all ought to be excited. Somebody just shouted amen. I can't hear you because I'm on it. Thank you. Thank you, Bishop. I saw you wave your hand. But amen. That's amen. 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 Yes. Amen. 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 And I like that. Yeah. And they were telling me. I close every meeting that I'm in. I close every meeting. And I meet with the Black Lives Matter people once a month here in Atlanta. And I tell the young people, y'all can't do what we did because that was 1960. You in 2020, you got more than we had. So don't just fight because somebody put a knee on your neck. Fight for justice, fight for ethics, fight for morality. So tonight, I always close any little closing remarks with this. Remember this, we're on the winning team. I'm talking to a group of winners tonight. Don't ever get tired. Don't ever get weary because you're on the winning team. And God said, I will give you the peace to keep fighting. I will give you the peace that you don't even understand and the peace that surpasses all understanding. And that peace will control how you think and how you feel. Right now, I feel good. I'm thinking well because I'm at peace because I'm with some of our friends on the phone call in California and we're on the winning team and we're going to hold Biden and Kamala right to the... We're going to be down there and get rid of Wheeler. We're going to get rid of the rest of it. We're going to get rid of President Donald Frankenstein. <laughs> because his time is up. <laughs> so thank you for allowing me just to come and congratulate you. I don't get excited. I just wanted to say something kind of quiet. And, and it's late <laughs> here tonight. And I got another meeting at 10 o'clock tonight. And it's already after 930. So I ain't got no more time to waste with y'all. But I just want to say I love you. Stay with Interfaith Power and Light. We're going to be sending out more information. We're going to be sending out, find the people out there with the Prophets Club, work along with Susan Henderson, Susan Hen uh, uh, Hendershot. It's going to be important. We down here in Georgia and all the other affiliates in the night, congratulate you. You were the first affiliate. And sometimes when you're the first to go out, it gets tough. It gets weary. You get tired. You wonder if anybody's listening to you. You wonder if it's worth it. Yes, I felt the same way in 1960. I led all the students at Tennessee State in 1963 when we went to the march and we wondered what was going on. And then we came back, we were excited in 1963 of August, got back to Tennessee State and three, years, three months later, President Kennedy was killed. And we wondered, should we go on? And it's at times like that in tough times, you say, no, we will keep on going. And I'll never forget, I was 18 years old and I met a long, young little boy named, he was 20 years old. His name was John Lewis, and an old man, 34 years old, was talking to us named C.T. Vivian. And I said, what's this old man going to teach us, John? And now we see. I did the eulogy for C.T. Vivian. John was laying right next to me there. And now I look back. When I talked to Amos Brown out there in California, Amos is an old warrior out there in California. Got him some crippled knees, but he's still a warrior. Don't worry about that. Thank you so much for tonight. This is our time. This is our moment. And I'm not here to pump you up. I am not an inspirational speaker. I tried for years to motivate my son to pull up his pants. And he just said, Dad, it'll be all right. No, I just want to encourage you, inspire you. And thank you, California Interfaith Power and Life. Thank you for Preservation Church. Thank you for Temple. And thank you for Grace Temple. You are doing it. And thank you for all the work that you're doing for CILP. We love you. Stay strong. And if there's anything that we can do outside of giving you some money, please give me a call. <laughs> I love you. Amen. Bye. Amen. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, we Round of applause for Daryl. Woohoo! Wow. All right. Wow. Thank you, everyone. You can see why Dr. Durler is our last closing speaker of the night. Thank you for that wonderful send off. And now we are going to play one song for you. Um, and this is our closing song. It's Pressing My Way uh, by John Key. And it is being sung by the Unity Inspiration Ensemble. So we're on the winning team. We're on the winning team. <laughs> Never forget that we're on the winning team. Thank you. Yes, we are. All right. Good night, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm pressing my way. I'm pressing my way. Trust me.
Good night, everyone. Thank you for being with us. Good night. Good night. Thank, Thank you, everybody. Thank you. It's a wonderful evening. Blessings. Thank you. Very inspiring. Thank you. Thank you. Reverend Early. Thank Good night, you. all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you. Bishop Early. <laughs> Bishop. <coughs> Calling him Bishop. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you, all. Uh, Sure. Thank you, everybody. I didn't realize you can get so exhausted listening to somebody talk. <laughs> yeah. Well done. It's John Lewis. So <laughs> oh, and it's exciting talk, Dr. Gerald. It was phenomenal, but it's exhausting. <laughs> yeah, but well, it was worth it. That was beautiful. It was what, worth thank it. It's thank you, good, Reverend. It's, it's called good exhaustion. You can get in good trouble or good exhaustion. Take it okay. back. Okay. Okay. that. Thanks. Amen. Hopefully Amen. I'll drink Steve's Amen. wine to that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly what we needed. Thank you, Alice. Thank you, Susan. All amazing. Yes. Every one of Thank you. you. Great Thank job, you CIPL. Everyone. Get Thank going. You. Great evening. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night. Thank Good night. you. Good night. Need an encore.